so hey everyone welcome back to placements ready in this video we will be solving the problem perfect numbers so we are given a number n check if a number is perfect or not a number is said to be perfect if sum of all its factors excluding the number itself is equal to the number return 1 if the number is perfect otherwise we need to return 0 so for example if n is equal to 6 the factors of 6 are 1 2 3 and 6 so sum of every number except that number itself so which is going to be 1 2 3 so the sum is going to be 6 so 6 is equal to 6 so we will be returning 1 here similarly for 10 the factors are 1 2 5 and 10 the sum of 1 2 5 is going to be 7 which is not equal to 10 so we will be returning 0 the expected time complexity for this is square root of n and the expected auxiliary space is going to be order of 1. So here if you observe n can be up to 10 to the power 12. So we need to do it in square root of n. So let's discuss the problem in more detail. So let's say my number is 6. So what are its factors 1, 2, 3 and 6. So the most brute force way in order to do this is that you can run a loop for int i equal to 1 i less than n i plus plus and you can simply check if n is divisible by i so we can use a sum basically and add up all the i's and we can in the end just check sum is equal to n or not okay but this will be taking a order of n time right but we need to optimize this so how can we optimize so let's observe some patterns so let's say 6 is my number its factors are 1 2 3 and 6 okay and square root of 6 is around 2 and 3 so let's say if we take the integer part it is 2 similarly for 36, what are its factors? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18 and 36. Okay. So now, what we can do? If we observe 6, we can have a for loop. Basically, it will be running from nothing but 2 because we know 1 is the factor of every number so we can start our for loop from 2 now in the for loop what we can do we need to do that in a square root of n time so dekho kya hoga yaha pe let's say i run my for loop from 2 till i is less than equal to square root of n okay why because if you observe i can get this 36 here using this how 6 into 6 is going to be 36 so if you write all the possible multiplications how can we get a 36 so 36 can be get we can get in this way 2 into 18 is also going to be 36 3 into 12 is going to be 36 similarly 6 into 6 is going to be 36 and 9 into 4 is going to be 36 as well here also 4 into 9 is going to be 36 right and finally the numbers will now repeat correct so what you observe basically we know multiplication is commutative in nature so a cross b is equal to b cross a right so see here 1 is there right and the last factor is going to be 36 into 1 so this and this is going to be common right this and this is also common similarly 3 into 12 and 12 into 3 is common 4 into 9 and 9 into 4 is common so maximum one thing you can observe if i do a calculation till this point okay i can get all the factors right why see for 2 into 18 this is going to be 36 we can 
डिवाइड थर्टी सिक्स बाई टू इन ऑर्डर टू गेट द अदर फैक्टर राइट सिमिलरली टिल दिस पॉइंट वी कैन डिवाइड थर्टी सिक्स एंड वी कैन गेट अदर फैक्टर राइट सो सम हाउ वी नो वी नीड टू डू द ऑपरेशन टिल ओनली द पॉइंट वेयर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन क्रॉस स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन गिव्स मी एन राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल हेयर सिक्स इंटू सिक्स इज गोइंग टू बी थर्टी सिक्स सो वी नीड टू डू आवर ऑपरेशन टिल ओनली द स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन करेक्ट सो आई होप यू हैव गॉट वाई वी नीड टू डू आवर ऑपरेशन टिल ओनली स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन नाउ मूविंग ऑन लेट्स सी हाउ वी कैन गेट द अदर फैक्टर राइट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई रन माई फॉर लुक फॉर इंट आई इक्वल टू टू आई लेस दैन इक्वल टू स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन आई होप वाई वी आर डूइंग दिस इज क्लियर टू यू आई प्लस प्लस सो इफ एन इज गोइंग टू बी डिविजिबल बाई आई राइट वी कैन हैव अ सम वेरिएबल विच विल बी इनिशियली जीरो ओके If n is divisible by i, I know for sure i is going to be my factor. So I can sum that up, and we can get one of the factors, right? Now, in order to get the other factor, for example, let's say if we consider two, so we can get the other factor easily if we divide that by two. So eighteen is my other factor, right? As I told you, here eighteen is going to be my one of the factors. so that we can easily get using n by i right but here one interesting case appears for example let's say if you consider 25 what are its factors 1 5 and 25 okay if you write all the possible ways in which we can get 25 you can observe 1 into 25 is going to be 25 5 cross 5 is going to be 25 okay and again if you take the commutative Relative property, you can again get a twenty-five, and twenty-five into one is going to be twenty-five. So for those cases where the factor is going to be a perfect square, we will be considering that only once. Okay. For example, five is a twenty-five is a perfect square number. So in this case, twenty-five divided by five is going to be five itself, right? So if we can tell. basically the case where i cross i is going to be n right that will be the case of a perfect square number so in that case we can check if i is not equal to n by i right we can sum that up only once correct in the end we will be getting the sum of all the factors so what we can check we can simply check if n is not equal to 1 and whatever with the sum we get is equal to n right we can return a true otherwise we can return a false by true i mean return 1 and here return 0 okay so in this way we can solve our problem basically if n is going to be 1 which means n is going to be divisible by 1 itself so we will not be considering that so it is written in the problem you don't have to take that number as the factor okay so we will not be considering 1 if n is equal to 1 okay and in this way we can solve our problem so let's do a try run let's say 36 is going to be my number so i know for sure 1 2 Three, four, six, nine, twelve, eighteen, and thirty-six is going to be the numbers, right? Now, for thirty-six, you know, we will be starting our iteration from here, so sum will be initially zero, okay, and we will be adding up two because thirty-six divides two, so sum will be two, and we can get this number right by dividing that. So two plus eighteen, when we go to three, we sum that up. Since three into three is not equal to thirty six, we can take this up. So we can take this twelve. We go to four, we sum that up. Thirty six divided by four is going to be nine. We add it, we go to six. Now this is the case of perfect square numbers. 
so in that case we will be taking six only once so what what is the sum 2 plus 18 is going to be 20 23 12 35 4 39 plus 9 is going to be 48 plus 6 54 so since 54 is not equal to 36 we will be returning a false correct if we take 6 its factors is going to be 1 2 3 and 6 so we can say for sure my sum initially will be 0 if we take 2 sum is going to be 2 right the other factor is going to be nothing but 6 divided by 2 which is going to be 3 okay so 2 plus 3 is going to be 5 and in the end we can add 1 to it so we will be getting a 6 so here you can modify it in the end we can add a sum sum plus 1 is equal to n and we can get our answer right so i hope you have understood the problem the maximum time complexity for this is going to be big o of square root of n and the space complexity is going to be order of one only why because we are only using a sum variable okay so let's discuss the implementation first of all we have taken a sum the type of sum is going to be long long why because it is written n is up to the power of 10 to the power 12 so integer agar lete to fit nahi aata so we have taken long long right we will be running our loop for int i equal to 2 i less than equal to square root of n i plus plus if n is going to be divisible by i we will first check if that is not the case of a perfect square if that is the case of perfect square we will be adding i plus n by i right otherwise we can simply add that up sum plus is equal to i okay this is for example 36 ka case tha pe 2 or 18 tha. since 2 is not equal to 18 we will be adding both of them right why kar rahe the first or last wale ko add kar rahe the but agar 6 aata since 6 is equal to 36 by 6 okay so we will be adding that up only once so that is the code and in the end we can simply check if n is not equal to 1 and sum plus 1 is equal to n why because we have started our sum from 0 and we know for sure that 1 is going to be the factor for every number so in the end we can return this so i hope you have understood this problem if you have any doubts write it down in the comments do like this video if you have understood share among your friends and don't forget to subscribe the channel thanks for watching guys